Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Adam is in Weybridge. Adam, what made you pick up the phone? Um, I, I want to ask you as oh, to okay. to extol the benefits of staying. Oh, uh, being it. in the European Union at the moment? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, do you mind if I get someone else to do it? Yeah, fine. Uh, would Ian Duncan Smith be good? Yeah, that sounds really good. Okay. The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiation, and I think we got taken As for we a know, ride. No. Well, we got taken for a ride because we weren't. There you go. The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiation, according to Ian Duncan Smith, who's Boris Johnson's campaign manager. OK. Hasn't, 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 hasn't quite gone the way, hasn't quite gone the way you planned, has it, Adam? James, James, extol the virtue of staying. I, I, I just did. It would be part of a, a brilliant <laughs> negotiating <laughs> team, according to Ian Duncan Smith. You gave me idea. Yes. Extol the virtues. You, you, well, it, you. Let's listen to listened. it again. Let's listen to it again. The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiation. So and I that, think that's what we need to be. We, we want to be part of a, of a of a team that is a master at hard-nosed negotiations. James, what, what's the problem with that? That's a soundbite. You extol <laughs> to the nation. I don't right? need to. Ian Duncan Smith has just explained. No, that's a soundbite, James. Play the game. Pardon? Play the game. You know Ian Duncan Smith is an arch lever, right? So? And he's explaining how brilliant the EU is at you negotiations. Explain, you have to explain it to your listeners. Oh, okay. All right. We currently have 759 trade deals with approximately 180 different countries. 160, I think. 81 full trade agreements. There's only one... Uh, I think there's only about 161 countries on the planet. Well, um, that's astonishing, then. Adam? Yeah? We currently have 81 trade deals, um, in terms okay. of what you'd call a full free trade agreement. We have 759 trade deals with about 160 countries. I'm not going to quibble with you. I haven't counted all the countries in the world. But if, as you suggest, there are only 161, then you just ask me to extol the benefits of staying. It's hard to think of a more crushing contribution to that conversation than the one that I've just handed to you. Hey, fair enough. So, in conclusion... I think there are 195 countries in the world, actually, but I'm open to correction on that. So do you, do yeah. you feel that no, I've played... Have I played the game now, Adam? Yeah, you have. OK. And I like you, James. I, I, I don't wait, agree with you, This isn't, this isn't like a dating you. service. Which bit do you not agree with about the 759 trade deals with 160 countries that, that I just shared with you? Um, I... I I disagree with you, James, because no, I think that's that not what I asked. I asked which bit, those numbers, which of those numbers do you disagree with? Because that's counting, that's not opinions. No, no, I don't, I don't agree with you. I, I probably got the numbers wrong. Right. But you just rang in thinking that you had some sort of zinger to play by saying, oh, why don't you extol the virtues of staying? And, and you, 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 you've literally... Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my point, though, James. Yes. Right? Damn those facts, eh, Adam? I, I, I listen to you, James. I listen to you all the time. Good. Right? And I think you're fantastic. Yes. But I want you to extol the virtues of stay. I just did. To the people. I, I just did. And so, did he, and so did Ian Duncan Smith. So we currently have 715. It's probably gone up, actually. This was, what's the, this was June of, of uh, last June, I think, June 2019. I think we've actually probably signed a couple more since then. But there you go. Those, those are the virtues. And Ian Duncan Smith pointing out that the EU... Let's hear it again, because I just thought Ma didn't pick up on this yesterday. The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiations. That's just incredible, right? That, that actually play it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, because that is a campaign for remaining. The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiation. Well, what's the reason for leaving? We'll be able to negotiate our own trade deals. What, what are we like? How, how are the EU at this? They're masters.
And what, what are we like again, Ian? The EU is a master at hard-nosed negotiation. Oh. Well, this is all working out rather well. Helen in Watford, speak to us. Hi. Hi, Magic. Welcome. Um, I'm over the moon that Philip is Philip Hammond is resigning. That's great news. What I'm concerned about, are you were discussing with your last caller that Sajid Javid would kind of automatically because he's been Home Secretary, get into the Chancellor's position. And I well, think that's an appalling... He, de he desperately wants it. Well, he's done an absolutely shockingly bad job as Home Secretary. He's got no control of our borders. He's opened the back doors to immigration. And he's, he, he hasn't proved himself... Oh. Uh, and what do you mean, because... Helen, what do you mean no control of our borders? What does that mean? Well, we've got 100 plus people coming over by boat each day, which is um, unreported by the media. And Sajid Javid has got no, no hold on that whatsoever. Mm, and mm. he's basically, he's relaxed all the rules that Theresa May put in place um, for foreign students coming well, over. Uh, Helen, they're not required to speak English. Think, uh, listen, they don't have way, to I, prove their finances. Uh, uh, Helen, I, I disagree um, with some of this stuff, but I'm going to give you some examples of, because we've been covering it on my show quite regularly. Mr. Sajid well, Javid is the... I haven't heard it on LBC. Well, no, LBC hold on, are no, not no, no. talking about this hold, at all. No, hold on. I'm not, not talking about the uh, boats. I'm talking about what I'm about to say, which is M Mr. Javed has been uh, leading the government's hostile environment policy, deporting people from this country, stripping... He hasn't uh, been deporting people... Hold on, Sajid. Helen. Let me finish a sentence, please. Stripping uh, British citizens of their citizenship abroad because they happen to be... Uh, have joined a, a terrorist organisation uh, such as ISIS. Um, so Mr Sajid Javid has been rather strict on this stuff and actually probably... He hasn't at all, Sajid. That's not true. My oh, name's Hundreds Majid. of people coming over, if I'm allowed to make this point, hundreds of people coming over by boat. He's deported about 30. They're automatically allowed to stay. They're given an allowance and they're given houses. They're allowed so to stay if they claim asylum then? Look, people are throwing away their passports and just saying they're coming from Iran. They're Pakistani, Afghanistan, Iranian, all sorts of people from so Calais. So think, you think that our, our Home Office can't tell the difference between Iranians and Pakistanis? Our Home Office are doing an appalling job of patrolling and protecting our borders. So G. Mm. Javid is responsible. Not only what would that, you, what would you he's do, Helen, relaxed instead? the quota and the target Helen, what would you do for instead? immigration. What would you do instead? We need to put money into our border, border control. Mm, no, but well, people are coming over in rubber dinghies, and, and it's not that many people compared the to what happens thing, in... Sajid, uh, hold on. No, the, no, my name's Magic, sorry, Helen. Sorry, Magic. Yeah, can I ask you a question, please, Helen? Cannot give somebody Helen, can like I ask Sajid you? a job just because to fill diversity quota. People uh, need to be good at their jobs, not get a job I just don't because think that's they're what's Pakistani happening. origin. Uh, Helen, I don't think that's what's happening here. Because he's a shockingly bad Home Secretary, and he's right. biased. Because he comes from an immigrant background... He's biased towards these people. You oh, need someone oh, tough. Helen, you sound. In this, so this is interesting. So you that think is one of the you, problems we have. Helen, would you only trust? Can I ask you? Would you only trust uh, somebody that doesn't come from an immigrant background to have control of our Home Office? Is that what you're saying? Well, I think it's a strong bias. So you think that only white people can? Do you think Helen? Do you think only white soft. Britons can be good Home Secretaries because of your I point? I think Sajid is soft on immigration. Yeah, answer of his my background. question, please, Helen. Yeah, do you think only white Britons can be good Home Secretaries because of the point you just made that he's got a bias? Well, I don't know why you're asking that question, Majid. Because That's you just, just said a, something that yes. is indicative of an answer that I'm trying to understand. So please address well, look, the question. I'll explain to you. No, if don't you explain to me. Answer the question. Background, you are soft on immigration. Helen, do you think only white Britons will make right strong and good home secretaries um, and that only white Britons should take that post? Yes or no? He's not right. Helen, for you can answer the question. Background. Helen, uh, what are you scared are you of? If you have angry? a view. No, I'm asking if you have angry, an opinion. Magic? No, I'm asking you why you're trying to hide your real beliefs. Are you scared of them? Are you, are you embarrassed of what I you don't actually know believe? I why you're trying to slant conversation. Helen, are you embarrassed of your opinions? No, not at all. Then, then tell us, tell us what you really think. I have done. Do should a white Briton are, are only white Britons, according, according to you, qualified to make good home secretaries? No. Then why, why are you saying that he, no one from an immigrant background can make a good home secretary because they have an I didn't inbuilt say bias? That. You're putting words in my mouth. I didn't you you say just that. said you think because of his immigrant background he has a bias. 
uh, he's soft on immigration. He's done an appalling job, and that you, he no, no, shouldn't not, automatically no, Helen, get Helen, to be chancellor. Helen, we, we've got you on radio. You, I know exactly what you said, and it's going to be on the podcast when you play it back. You said because of his immigrant background, he has a bias, and people from Im immigrant backgrounds are biased towards immigration. That implies you don't think people from Im immigrant backgrounds should be home secretary. So can you please stop being embarrassed of your views and just explain to us what you mean? Do you I think only been, white Britons should be I home secretaries? I've explained to you quite clearly what I think. No, that's not very clear at all. It, you've got very upset about it. No, Helen, it's not very clear at all. What I'm trying to do, rather than getting upset, is get you to actually admit your beliefs on radio rather than hide them. You're a bit like the Islamists that call in. You. They run around in circles and don't answer my question. If you I've think people from immigrant backgrounds make you. bad home secretaries, do you think only white Britons who don't have the bias you've referred to will make good home secretaries? Yes or no? I told you already, no. No, who else will make a good Home Secretary then? Well, we need someone tough on immigration. That's what people are calling for in this and country. And can people from immigrant backgrounds be tough on immigration? Why do you keep asking me the same question? This is very up You've got very upset about this. No, Helen, Close because actually heart, you're obviously. avoiding the answer. Because actually we all heard you say that because of his immigrant background, you don't think uh, that he can be uh, good on immigration. And so I'm asking oh, whether that's a Sajid, condition for you. Sajid Javid has proved that. In his case, that but in your analysis, he's else. proved it. In your analysis, he's proved it because of his immigrant background. Now you're the one I'm who raised that, not me. Each person, case by case. I'm not. Well, you're clearly that not because everyone. you made a general I'm statement, Helen, which is why I'm pulling you up on it. In his case, and if yep. you let me who, finish, who would you vote you for, Helen? Speak without who, who, talking over Who would you me? vote for, Helen? I'll explain who would you, to you. you know, Helen, I'm we don't have much time, Helen. Who would you vote for, Helen? We don't have much time. You, you've gone around, beaten around the houses. You're embarrassed of your views. It's fine. Who would you vote for, Helen? Please address the question. Who would you I'm vote saying for? saying this is Saji Jamidi. All right, goodbye, Helen. Thank you very much. You're not going to answer the question, are you? It's just clear. We all heard what you said. You said it in a general sentence. You said people from immigrant backgrounds are biased towards immigration. You made that point. So I asked you a question as to whether you think only white Britons, therefore, will make good home secretaries because you made a general point. And then you became embarrassed of your true beliefs, which is a good thing, mind you, because to be embarrassed of racism and bigotry is how we should be in society. Um, you know, something has been, when the lid's been taken off this pot, a whole lot of ugly stuff underneath has been revealed and perhaps you've got a bit of that ugly stuff in you as well. Uh, but it is good to be embarrassed of the ugly stuff now and then, so thank you for your uh, 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 being embarrassed of your own views. That's Helen in what? Dave, hello. Hello, Sheila. Can Boris Johnson unite the nation? Um, I must be honest, he wouldn't be my first choice, but um he may, he may do. Um, I just wish that some of these politicians would, would accept democracy um, as the people of this country voted for it um, and stop throwing up hurdles all the way. Um, we want our borders back. We want control of things. Um, we still don't... We, we'd still end up with the EU having rights to fish in our waters if they stuck with the deal that we were offered under Theresa May. Not forever. No, but I, I think it's, it would be long enough for us to get a bit browned off with it before before it run out. Um, I just don't think she had her heart in it at all anyway. I don't think she really wanted to leave, and everything she did seemed to me to show that she hadn't got the gumption. Well, um, Boris does hang on, hang on, hang on. She didn't have the gumption or she didn't want to leave? Which, which was it? Well, I think it's both. She didn't have the gumption. But if, but if she didn't want to leave, she would have said, wouldn't she, OK, I'll soften those red lines. But instead, she came right out the traps with those red lines on single market and customs union. We'll leave them both. I think there'd have been a lot more um, aggro if she'd have done that, um, believe me, um, because it's, that, is, that isn't what people voted for. You've got a prime minister that is supposed to be there to put into position and place that which the people voted for. She failed. And the, the politicians in Westminster are failing the people. And I think when the elections come round, the people won't forget who is on their side. Because it doesn't certainly seem to be a good few of those that we voted for into Parliament. Well, who, who's on your side? People that want out. Um, I didn't particularly think about a deal or no deal. I wanted out. I wanted control of our borders. That's where I want. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think most citizens, ordinary citizens, you, me, you know, most citizens didn't 
uh, think much about the the depth of relationship, the complexity of legalities, of trade relationship and all the rest of it. Jobs, livelihoods, you know, all of that stuff, all the detail of that 40-year relationship. Most of us probably didn't think of that when, when we voted on the, um, in 2016. But isn't it the job of our politicians and our civil service to do just that and make sure that we leave in as undamaging a way as possible? Yeah, but then what's the World Trade Organization for? Does it exist or not? Because we've got that to, to use, and now a lot of other countries. Yes, seem but to you, do but do you well accept? That. But do you accept that the the manner in which Boris Johnson was claiming we could use, and others were claiming we could use World Trade Organization terms, actually has at every turn turned out not to be the case when it comes to our continuing um, relationship with Europe? Probably, I don't know, but the World Trade Organization is there as as a support and a back up for people that are in a situation different to ours in different places in the world we have that to fall back on so we're not going to be the paupers that everybody thinks we're going to be we've created things for centuries in this country you can't imagine surely the same as a lot of other people in this country can't imagine that you want to jeopardize our buying of their things because they supply a lot of goods to us that we buy. We buy more from them than they buy from us. They can't afford to lose that market. And they would do if they, yeah, if but they don't... Are, no, I, I, I don't doubt for a second that they don't want to lose that market. And I don't doubt for a second that Ireland doesn't want to... Uh, lose the the what was it three to five percent of its economy that that it it has established it will in a no deal scenario i'm, I'm sure you're right that, that those things are true but, but the reality of the change that that you and boris johnson at the moment is espousing um it means tariffs dave and that means a change at least to the nature of that business and the cost of that business Yes, but then it's a fair field, isn't it? A fair playing field for people. Well, it's except the, for the people who can no longer tariffs. afford the things they used to buy, which might not include you, might not include me, but it will include an awful lot of people who are already well, struggling. It, it, it probably would include me, but, I mean, it, you, you can't... It, things have to change apart from Brexit. We know this. Um, there are things that have happened with austerity over the last few years, which is a completely different argument, that people have been left behind. That, that it, It's wrong. That needs to be looked at as well. But if there's tariffs, there's tariffs. We have to get around that. We have to deal with it. The same as we've had to deal with a lot of other and, things. We dealt with and, years of bombing from the Germans and, in the war. Oh, um, I, I doubt whether the march of fascism and a violent five-year war is the yardstick we want for how well Brexit has turned out. Is it, Dave? No, but we recovered. <laughs> yeah. We recovered. We, yeah. we, 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 we yeah. had... With an American the bailout. The steel with an American on. bailout. And guess what? Huge numbers of immigrants coming to help us rebuild the country, only to be told, go home 40 years later. Yeah, well, that was that was awful. Uh -huh. That was an absolutely horrible thing to do. Mm. I've got quite a few um, African and West Indian friends, and I think it was completely out of order. Um, that's Can I ask you a, a simple question? Because I, I don't think we're going to agree on the WTO and the no deal scenario, Dave, so let's not flog a dead horse. Can I ask <laughs> you a more overarching political question? Uh, it's been yes. a pleasure talking to you, by the way. Um, can I Thank ask you. you a more overarching political question about Boris Johnson? Um, yes. It, even though you said he wouldn't be your first choice, do no. you, like Liz Truss, do you see a man who will at least be as dogged, as strong for his side, as they say the EU and Ireland have been and that Theresa um, May wasn't. Is, 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 do, do you see strength there? Do you see commitment from him that wasn't there in Theresa May? What is it you see? I don't know. I hope he is. Um, I hope he is. I, I think that um, he, he will stand up for things. Uh, he's, I get the impression that he is the sort of person that will stand up for his beliefs and he seems to be quite an honourable character in, in, in some ways. But he wrote two articles. He wrote two articles for, him, for himself about whether he supported Brexit or not. I know. Meeny, meeny, um, miny, mo. This is what I think. Yes. Um, but there they go on a lot of politicians like that anyway. Um, so not in my experience, no. Well, I don't know. There's been quite a few through, um, through our history. But I think he probably would be 
um, a little bit more forceful. Okay, well, well, we'll find out. Dave, thank you. Chris has called uh, from Seven Oaks uh, for the first time, I'm told. Hello, Chris. Yes, hello. Good afternoon to you. Hello. I'm a Boris fan. Hooray! Hey, <laughs> go, go on, go on. Probably the only one out there. No, no, no. Program. I've no. I've mustered a few up by saying, "Come on, <laughs> fellas and ladies, come on." I've been on the cusp of ringing you all morning. I was listening to James O'Brien, and I was so livid. He's so depressing and, <laughs> and such a defeatist. I can't believe the man. Oh. But nevertheless. We soldier on, don't we? We do. Yeah, I think Boris is good. I love his enthusiasm. I think we need change at the top. Um, yes, OK, we've got a measured risk. You have to go to the gut. You have to go with a no deal on the table. If you don't, you've got no ace up your sleeve. You know, no one's going to no take you seriously. It might be a game of poker. Yes, uh, there's risk. Um, but let's face it, you know, the country is not good anyway. It hasn't been good for a long time. We're fed up with it. We're going around in circles. This, um, this article I've got in front of me by Lloyd Evans in The Spectator says um, uh, he's completely unpredictable. Pranks, jokes, inventive ideas, wheezes, as he calls them, pour out of him, um, uh, which pe some people criticise him for. But Lloyd Ev Evans is saying that this could be... His anarchic streak could be the very thing that kicks the EU into touch in these negotiations. I'm not convinced. I mean, I don't know whether you watched that panorama the other night where we looked like the amateurs and they looked like the professionals. I, I, sadly, I missed that one. Um, but I, but, 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 I'd but, urge you to bottom, watch it. Well, OK. The bottom line is, I don't mind. Yes, he's been a bit of a daft one, but I think he's very intelligent. He's obviously a very intelligent man, and he's not going to be just on his own. He's got a lot of supporters. Yes, people are uh, jumping ship at the moment. Good. Good riddance to them. It's time for change. It's time for something fresh. So for you, if, if there was one quality in him that gives you confidence, it's it's the enthusiasm, is it? Absolutely. I love his enthusiasm. I believe his enthusiasm. I love it when he points to saying, come on, we can get up off our backsides. We can make this country great. We are good. And we're going to be brilliant when we're under a bit of pressure. At the moment, you know, we just cruise along. We've all got soft. But it's time. OK, feel a bit of pain. Get out there and fight it. That's what we've got to do. You know, we, can, we can start new businesses. We can do all sorts of things. Encourage. OK, too many people are going on to higher education. Get out there, get jobs, use your brains, more entrepreneurs, encourage youngsters, to, you know, not just to go through chasing this, this dream. You know, there's too many of them. You know, get out there, earn a living, you know, put something back into the system. It's, you know, the country is good. I just think that in the EU, it's like being on the Titanic. Well, after it hit the iceberg, you, it was inevitable it was going to sink. Well, we've had the foresight. And I'll tell you what, when we come out, because we will, and it'll get us out on the due day, then it'll cause a domino effect. They'll all start crumbling. You watch. What, why? Why are you so confident he'll get us out on the? Because on, that means no you deal, know, doesn't it, it? The due date. I, I, I believe him. I believe him. I think by hook or by crook, he will. I don't know how, but I do believe him. I so it's think faith. It's on that day. blind faith, Chris, is what you're talking about. It might be blind faith. You won't be the first person left. who's voted with blind faith. That's no, I voted at the time. When I voted to leave, uh, I voted to leave, and you're right. Though, and you know, We didn't know all the ins and outs and all the details, but I didn't like life at that time. I don't like the rules and regulations. It's all got too daft. And, uh, you know, people, there's lots of us out there. At the end of the day, the leavers, we won. So get over it. Come all on. right. OK, Chris. Chris thinks Boris Johnson's enthusiasm will get us over the line. What's beyond the line? We're not so sure. Stuart's next in uh, Bath and Somerset. Stuart, is he your Prime Minister? Oh, hi, mate. Yeah, hi. Um, yes, he, cer he certainly is. Yes, it's good news. I can tell you're a wee bit distracted. Is this still a good time to talk? Yes, no worries at all, mate. Go for it. OK, so tell me why you're excited about this man becoming your Prime Minister. Well, um, before we talk about Boris, I just want to say that a little sort of point out the amount the amount of anti Brexit and anti Trump um, dialogue that seems to get through on your station never gets challenged. It's just it, it does actually get laughable at times. Like the previous caller, I mean, there's no evidence of Boris being a nasty piece of work or anything, or like Trump or anything. He's just just coming out with it. I just think some of it needs to be challenged a bit more. You know, uh, how badly are you, you going to hurt? Not badly at all. I, I really, I want to know. Is it okay, let me explain to you. Is, is this guy seriously I'm furious? If, I guarantee you, he will not be seriously hurt. How badly hurt? He will not have a broken limb or broken arm, and he will not, uh, he will not be put into intensive care or anything like that. He will, will probably get a couple of black eyes and a and a and a, and a, and a crack rib or something like that. <laughs> and that's why you're here, Stuart. Go and challenge it. Right. Well. Uh, on Boris, then, I think it's 
It's great news for real conservatives. I think the main point is that he is actually a traditional conservative as, as much as he can be now. Um, I must admit, although I'd love to see Nigel Farage in my lifetime at some stage become Prime Minister, but that's a separate issue. Um, I think Theresa May it represented a more left-leaning um, portion of the Tories, which I know sounds ironic, but there are, I think there is such thing as a left-wing Tory now. Um, and I also think Jeremy Hunt is of the same mould. So I just think it's... Um, it is good news for real Conservatives, and as a Brexiteer, I like the idea of a no-deal, because no-deal is real Brexit. And you're not worried about any of the consequences of no-deal? Well, there are, co there are consequences of staying in the EU as well, so I'm not worried. Um, and I also know we only joined the EU in the early 70s, 73, 75, around that sort of time. So we were fine before that. We are actually doing quite well up until... Um, Labour hmm. at the time. But, I think, but, but it's, the way, it's the way we get out, isn't it? Yeah, it's the way we get out. It's got to be amicable. Um, I'm a big fan of Europe. Um, well, that's not no are... deal, though, is it? Well, we can still have a no deal. We can still have respect for each other. We just say, look, we're going it alone. We're Great Britain, after all. We're not, you know, it's not some tin pot country. We're, we've got a Commonwealth. We've got relationships with America. We'll go it alone. No deal. Then we can trade with the EU on the world stage, separately. Stuart, thank you. Um... Uh, switchboard glitch a moment ago. Terry's in High Wycombe. Terry, what does he stand for? Or does it matter that no, he doesn't no, seem to stand for anything? Think, I, I just think that he stands for something that you are not. We're just so tired of people like you consistently having one outlook on yes. anybody in the Tory party that you can't give a balanced view. I, well, I can. I, 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 I spoke to several Conservatives yesterday. Yes. So why? Uh, let's I not talk about me, Terry. Let's talk about you. What, what do you like? What does he stand for? He stands for a politician who think about the Leave voters. The Leave really voters? Who think about the Leave voters and the whole lot of things that Leave voters voted for. As far as you're concerned, it's only the, um, the Remain and the EU voice that should be heard. I'm, Anything else? I, I'm, listen, I'm black, so I'm not racist. No, I, I, no I'm one's not... mentioned racist, or, or actually Brexit, or, 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 or the EU, except except the last fellow. I, I mean, I think we can park that for the purposes of this conversation. He's obviously in favour of leaving. It's going to be difficult for him to keep happy the ERG and the man he's just appointed as an advisor who wrote, "You should the ERG should be treated like a, like a tumour and excised from the UK body politic. It's going to be difficult for him to keep both of those constituencies you, happy. No, no it's not. that's what he's going in for and that's what Lee voters want. What Lee no, but this is what Dominic want, Cummings wrote and this is his first appointment to Downing Street. But, but whatever Dominic Cummings wrote and yes. he hasn't seen it is not what Boris is saying. Look how many times... But if I was going to give you a job, I, if I was going to give you a job, I'd look at your CV, Terry. And, yeah. But the thing and and if I looked at Dominic Cummings' when I was 20... It's well, completely different from what, who I am at 50. He wrote, he wrote this on March the 27th. What did he... What, tell me that again, sorry. D Dominic Cummings um, wrote, you should be treated... Talking about the ERG, you should be treated like a metastasizing tumour uh, and excised from the UK body politic. Uh, you guys well, were too I think busy Boris shooting. Is just trying to bring people together. Yes, so that is one of the things he probably. So he's has bringing to together do. the the tumor and the man who despises the tumor. Well, this, this but anyway, we're, get, we're getting bogged down in Brexit. Any politician has to do. It's, I, have it's to exactly that. I, 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 listen, let's not talk about me and let's not talk about Brexit. What does he stand for? I'm just, as I told you, I think he stands for the UK and particularly for UK working class people. Okay. And that is what he stands for. Okay. Why, I know why you is don't he, believe it. Why has he offered a tax I cut? I know you don't believe why it. Why has he offered a tax cut to people earning over £50,000 a year? And, and what's, what's that got to do with, with well, I, um, him standing up for working class people? Well, I don't think most people's definition of working class involves earning double the national average salary. But you see, that is what you are thinking. A lot of people. But what do you mean work by working work class then? Well, we are talking about people who are on the low end of the ladder, whose well, um, jobs uh, are really low. Well, exactly. Really so, so jobs. he's offered tax cuts to people earning more than double the national average salary. Well, we, yes, but the thing about what's he offered? It is, what's he offered to people earning the national average salary, or what's he offered well, to people well, at the bottom of the ladder you just described? How you expect him to 
to answer all that on his first day in office. I'm not. I'm asking you to. I'm asking. I'm asking you to answer questions about what? stuff you just said. And, uh, uh, well, I think he stands for them because he is promising them what they voted for. Who? And that's the one thing. He's promising them what they voted for. He's promising He's who what they voted like for? The other, pol other politicians and the lead, the ex right, leader of the Tory party that was going to do their own business whether the lead voters wanted it or not. Okay. Um, I hope you're right. I don't really understand what you said, but I, uh, it, it sounds a bit more optimistic than a, than a lot of other people are feeling. I, I don't quite get how tax cuts for people earning over 50 grand a year is evidence of sticking up for the working class, but I suppose, hey, one day maybe everyone will be earning over £50,000 a year and then that will be a tax cut for the working class. There you go. We could get there. We can do this. Oh, boy. Paul's in Sandbach. Paul, what would you like to say? I, I just think that Boris will get the job done and I don't think the EU would ever give us a good deal because if they gave us a good deal then Spain and Italy and Greece would want a good deal good and they want to leave. Have you been so on a loop since 2015? Pardon? Have you been on a loop since 2015? I mean, I mean we're looking for something because Boris will do this, Boris will do that, the EU this, the EU that. Do, do Boris you... is a realist that he realises that unless you crash out of the EU and a short term pain you won't get the long term gain. Because the EU will not give in, right? And therefore, so why is he spent? Why, 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 why do you think actually, he wrote a column in favour of remaining in the European Union the day before he came out? Well, there are there are pros and cons to both, aren't there? But at the end of the day, it's the democratic decision of this country with a majority, and all these. But we've just we've just we've just, we've just, just established. Elected. We've just Nobody questions no. why they're in Parliament because they they won their local election. Pardon. I'll oh, come back, Paul. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Good man. Well, this is this is my problem, and I, and I do want to give you some space to explain it. When you talk about the the democratic will of seventeen point four million people, or, or whatever phrase you employ to express that thought, and I point out to you that Dominic Cummings, the head of the law breaking vote leave, or the brains behind the law breaking vote leave says this to the European Research Group, and I just use this as an example of who you lump together in that 17.4 million. You should be treated like a metastasizing tumour and excised from the UK body politic. How, how do you still hold to the notion that all of those people want the same thing? There was a vote... It was open to everybody. No, no, in this I, 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 I'm, I'm with specific reference to the to the man who masterminded the law-breaking vote leave campaign, describing the European Research Group who torpedoed Brexit as being like a metastasizing tumor and excise from the UK body politic. With, with reference only to what's in front of us today, how, how can you describe them as being a a, a, a homogenous, cohesive constituency? I don't use big words like that. All right, how that can word. you say they're all on the same but side? They had a vote. Everybody had a vote. Everybody was entitled to a vote. Yes, but and they it, clearly didn't election. vote for the same thing, Paul, because one, one of them is a tumour and the other is an advisor to Boris Johnson. So they clearly don't agree on what they voted for. But everybody in the country has a different opinion and everybody has the right to exercise that opinion at a poll, at a balloting box. Yes, and, but, and but you're claiming that 17.4 million people had the same opinion, and within 30 seconds you're saying that they all have different opinions. They all have a different opinion. So who does Boris Johnson opinion. represent then? Does he represent the metastasizing tumour, or does he represent the man that ran the law-breaking vote leave campaign? You'd have to ask Boris, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I'm asking you because you rang in to tell me what he represents. No, I rang in to say he'll be good for this country because But that doesn't mean anything, does in, it? In a, but those, are, those are completely empty sound bites. He, he'll be good for this country, he'll get the job done. What job? The job of Brexit. What yes. Brexit? The Brexit that will please the tumour or the Brexit that will, that will please the man that ran the law-breaking vote leave campaign? It doesn't matter. It, it's well, it, of course it matters. People, does it? It of matters course it matters. The majority. No, 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 but we've just said that there is no such thing as a majority if, if you can split it in half immediately. So who do you think, and I'm not going to hold you to this, I'm not going to ring you back in six months and go, ha-ha, you were wrong. Who do you think Boris Johnson represents? The man yeah. who ran the law-breaking vote leave campaign or the men and women he has described himself as being like a metastasizing tumour that needs to be excised from the UK body politic? Because there's no way he can represent both of them, is there? No. So which one do you think he represents? The metastasizing tumour or the man that ran the law-breaking vote-leave campaign? 
I don't think he represents either. I think he represents wow. the working person, me, who voted to leave, and I think he'll get that job done. Whether he'll stay on, whether it'll go further for him, whether um, we'll come out... Do you earn, more than, 50, there, do you earn more than 50 grand a year, if you don't mind me asking? You don't have to answer that. Pardon? Do you earn more than 50 grand a year? You don't have to answer that. Yes, I do, yeah. So he's, it's tax cuts for you, then? It's not tax cuts. It's nothing to do with tax cuts. A normal, ordinary working person on more than double the national average salary. I've worked. But I, I know you have, mate. So, so, so have plenty, plenty of people still are. He's not doing a lot for them. I, I, I've got no beef with you, but I'm just intrigued by what people mean when they say ordinary working person. I don't know what I mean when I say it, but I lean towards the, the national average income. Uh, and for the record, I think I'll, I'll be in line for even bigger tax cuts. Uh, happy days. If you don't care about the people who are going to be worse off. We haven't had any callers yet, so let's talk to Malcolm in Finchley. Hello, Malcolm. Hi there, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So we talked about the excited to anxious spectrum about Boris Johnson. You're excited, do you think he'll succeed? I do, yes. Um, fundamental reason is one of your earlier callers, callers um, talked about the backstop, but I don't think he properly explained to your listeners why it was relevant. The backstop locked us in. In other words, this country under that treaty couldn't leave it unless the EU agreed for us to leave. What's relevant about that is the money. We pay net 12 billion a year into the European Union. So every week that goes by, the European Union earn 250 million pounds or 1 billion pounds a month. For example, when Theresa May delayed it from the end of March to the end of October, the European Union earn another 7 billion. If you look at it in that context, to have a treaty where we can't leave it when the other side of that are earning £250 a week. It's not rocket science. Trump hit the nail on the head. When he saw what was going on over here, he said we should sue them. And I agree, we should sue them. This is a bunch of gangsters over there who are laughing at us because every week that goes by, they steal from the British taxpayer... Mm -hmm. Two hundred and fifty million pounds. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, Malcolm. I doubt very much whether you'll be on the team that's seeking a deal uh, with Boris Johnson. But thanks very much indeed for your call. How's Malcolm, Malcolm going to get around it when Boris Johnson brings something close to that deal back? Because that, I mean, that is the only way he can do it to avoid a general election. And there are a lot of Conservative MPs who are backing Boris Johnson on the basis that he is possibly the only person who can sell to the Euro European Research Group something very, very close to that deal. Olivia has been waiting very patiently. Olivia, what do you think of the, the new Prime Minister and his speech? I think it's a fine speech. You actually do need to have that sort of um, desire and energy as you're going in. And um, we've tried reasonable for three years. We've got nowhere with it. So, yeah, we do now need to kick ass, and, that, and that's what he's going to do. It's a different different PM. That's it. Hmm. And so we, we've had the words on a, on a practical basis. How would Boris Johnson and his team, when it comes to deal, dealing with the rest of the EU, how would they kick ass? Well, I think it would help if our team now actually go in and want Brexit, because it's fairly obvious Ollie Robbins and others were not interested in exiting. They wanted to remain, and they weren't um, fighting on our behalf. That's why David Davis, Dominic Raab, and others quit, because, because they had been sidelined. So now we'll actually have a team that actually does want to Brexit and fulfil the wishes of the, of the 2016 referendum, which but, is but, all but what, what we want. A, I understand, but what on a practical level, though, Olivia, I hear the point about the civil service, and we could talk about that, but just on a, on a practical level, uh, how, in terms of negotiation, would uh, a, a more determined team, a team that, as you say, believed in Brexit, what practical difference would that make to how the EU deal with us? Well, the EU would then understand that uh, there's no um, sleight of hand behind the scenes that, that we really do want to stay. And at the end of the day, Germany will have to look at, well, do they want to uh, lay off their car industry workers? Because who's going to buy their cars? What's going to happen to the French farmers? What's going to happen to the Italian cheesemakers? But Olivia, didn't we hear this all along? Didn't we hear this even before the referendum, that, that it would be very well, easy to, to strike deals because the EU would be desperate for one? And yet here we are. 
Yes, but do, do you do know that EU is in a mess and it's hardly growing. Well, and we had that as well you, before, didn't we? And yet here we are. Yes, I know. But but you, if you've definitely got somebody who uh, who believes in the project and the other side understand, oh my goodness, this lot are serious and they really are going to quit. You see, you know full well, everybody knows. In a negotiation, you actually have to be able to say, you know what, that's not a good deal. I'm walking away. And that's how you negotiate. That was never the case. They even told us on that EU program recently she never she never threatened to quit mm. so it's a different thing and i'm looking forward to, that we should be trading with the, the lovely farmers in africa who aren't subsidized by the eu and we can buy their products and they can then uh, make their children's lives better do the same in the caribbean and the latin american countries how fantastic trade with the world help those people out of poverty isn't that what all these liberal lefty wants to do are you normally this optimistic olivia I, I am because you, you always have to look at the bright side. You prepare for the worst, so we prepare for, for exit uh, if, they, if they're not going to play ball. But do you know what? I think they probably will because the, uh, if you actually ever listen to the World Service, you'll hear the people in Holland and France and Spain and Germany, the actual industry people saying, we All want right. a deal. Olivia, I've got to stop you there because Theo Usher would rush into the studio. Urgently, and right. that is the role of the new Prime Minister to take up. Good to hear from you. Thank you. Mel Evans of Greenpeace, part of that demonstration today. Uh, more thoughts on uh, Boris Johnson and what he said today in Downing Street. Rob is in Bedford. What did you think, Rob? Eddie, I'll tell you what, my friend, good to speak to you, but I'm in one head of the funnel, but I've got a couple of things to say, and I'm going to rank to go on, OK? And it starts with that woman who's just come on. Fair play about her principle there, OK? She walked past 15 people on the street with nothing to eat, screaming on the road, and in order to get to what she wants to protest about. But why doesn't she concentrate on the 15 people first? Let's get that right, OK? Right, secondly... Is she not entitled to, to protest about the climate not, change about to their view. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying the principle of what she's saying is wrong, OK? But... She's walked past 15 people to do that. Those 15 people need equal help. There's a lot of things going on. Right, sorry. But let me get to the point of saying, Boris Johnson. Okay, whether you like him, you don't like him, whatever. I'm sick to death of this country moaning, whinging, criticising, yeah, expecting people to be, you know, ultra, ultra, ultra perfect, okay? You've just whinged and criticised the last person who was on. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, she's, she's the one who's, who's, who's standing in front of Boris. She's no, you were whinging about her. About. You're whinging about whingers and you're okay. a whinger. All right. If I, I'm, I'm certainly not a whinger. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a rat. That, 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 that's me. That defines me as a whinger. So I'm a tricky point. Yes, exactly. Okay, people, the, you're saying okay. that people in this country are sick and tired the, of people like you. You got me on that one already. I'll accept your point, okay? Right. But, look, um, look. Where were you? Whether he's right or wrong. Whether yes. he's right or wrong, okay? All we do... All I hear is, you know, he's not right there, he's not right there. But you know what, yeah, those two got in the position of running for it, OK? Not us, nobody else, none of those other MPs, yeah, those two, OK? Now, we've chosen him, or they chosen him. Well, yeah, you okay? say we, we've and chosen him, I mean, come okay. on. Well, the party's chosen him, OK? Now, why don't we have the respect, and this is the massive word that we seem to have lost, why do we have the respect as a country, as a group of people, to get behind someone? We can't always win in life. We can't always get our own way. Things go against us, but that doesn't mean that as a group of people, yeah, that we don't back the team and do the very best, even if we think, like, right, it's against our view. Now, that's what it's about. That's what made us strong. Okay. All right, Rob. Well, I, I, I take that point, and I, I appreciated everything you said. I want you to practice. Yeah. I want you to practice what you preach. I want you to say. Well, I think I do. I, 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 no, forgive me. You I want you to, to I'd like you to you say something nice. I'd like you to say something nice about the climate change protesters. As I said, literally, I would think the principle of what they are trying to get to is a hundred percent right, and I admire them for that. The way they're going about doing it, yeah, is entirely the wrong way. Right. Okay, and and you know, if she's going to have principles, this particular lady, and I admire the principle of the global war, warming scenario. If she's going to have it, then you know, you can't you you, you can't you can't focus your attention on just. You know, the future and so on and so forth. Okay? All right, Rob. Well, Rob, Rob. Uh, we're, walking past, so it's far of it. We're going to have to go, but, but I, I'd like talking to you, and I'd like to give you the honour. If you want it, you don't have to do this, but if you want it, yes. I'd like to give you the honour of introducing the Steve Allen soundbite of the night. You just have to say, next on LBC, the Steve Allen soundbite of the night. 
And next, ladies and gentlemen, on LBC, Steve Allen with Joe Biden at the night. I've got dark sheets because I'm a sex kitten. And, uh, no, not really. It's just that they haven't washed them. New Prime Minister, you made an 11 minute speech in Downing Street this afternoon. What did you think? Ryan has called in. Uh, Ryan, what do you think? Well, hello, Eddie. Hi. Um, first of all, great show. I think you've all missed the point. <gasps> I think you've all That's been. That's not like us. Uh, well, it has been lately. I mean, you interviewed Keir Starmer earlier on. Yes. Keir Starmer represents, you know, 250 champagne socialists in London, OK? He's irrelevant. Who and how do you think that Boris is going to turn around entire swathes of the UK in places where I live, like Essex, that voted for Nigel Farage in the EU uh, um, elections? They, t they pushed the Tories back into fourth place. It doesn't matter what Labour do. It doesn't matter what the Lib Dems do. You've all missed the point here. What is Boris going to do to get people like me backed? Because I tell you what, the fact that he's just come into power means nothing. Did you Absolutely hear his speech? Absolutely nothing. I'm not interested in his speech. I've heard speeches and speeches before. All right, well, there's no point in talking to you, Ryan, because the whole point of the conversation is to talk about his speech. And if you are not interested in the speech, then we'll end the conversation. He will behave differently, and therefore he will secure something that Theresa May couldn't secure. And that can only be a deal. Because anyone can secure no deal. You, you, you just don't turn up for work for the next two months, and then it happens, naturally, on October the 31st, kind of. Darren's in Barnet. Darren, what do you think? Yeah, well, I think the main difference is the negotiating stance, really. Um, as Michelle Barnier said, Theresa May never put will walk away on the table. The moment, the moment that, that uh, Johnson has said, OK, look, if you don't get a deal, we're going to walk away, then that takes some of the power in the negotiating stance off the um, of the European Union, and that's, the, the, they had all the power up to then. You, you, so we're back to that. No deal is better than a bad deal. It will hurt us well, more than it hurts you, but we're prepared to do it anyway. Well, how is that different from is. how is that different from Theresa May? Well, if you go in, okay, if you go into a shop and say and say I want to buy something, yes, but, and I'll I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to get it anyway. Yes. What what are we the, buying? You know, What's the thing? Well, well, we're, we're buying we're buying um, uh, a corporate of trade. Um, no, but agreement. in the analogy, what are we buying in the shop? Oh, well, basically, you, if, you, if you want to buy, I, I don't know, a shirt or something. Okay, right? and before we go yeah. into the shop, we've burnt all our okay. old shirts, right? So we go in yeah. not even wearing a shirt. No, 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 that's, that's, I, I'm not sure that's quite true. I, I don't think we've burnt all our own shirts. Okay, so which, which shirt, shirt is your analogy there? So which shirts do yeah, we keep in the event of no deal? <laughs> okay, right, so uh, we've got... Um, no, okay, we've got... So let's uh, just, like, we've got 120 free trade agreements at the moment, so let's call them shirts. In the event of no deal, uh, as mm. we go into the European Union trying to buy a new shirt while not actually wearing anything, which of those 120 agreements do we keep in the event of a no deal? Yeah, uh, okay, okay. You what, need to answer the question for my listeners. No, no, I understand that, but I do... You still I haven't answered it. Have to say, you, you do have to answer with, it first. How yeah, many do will, we keep? Uh, okay. Okay. What you've done is that is that you've is that you've you, you've you've uh, you basically practice abducto ad absurdum, which basically I've means taken you've your taken analogy. analogy. Yeah, you know, you've taken yes, yes. You so still haven't told my listeners how many shirts they're going to have at home. Okay. Well, we've got the sh okay. We've got the shirts from all our historical um, with from all our historical um, uh, contacts with both the Commonwealth, with both no. Uh, with, no, not in the context no, no, of no, not no, in the context no, of negotiated. Not you You've asked me for an answer, and I'm giving it. Good. So, how whether many how many of the current lunch? trade agreements in place do we retain in the event of a no deal Brexit? You said you're going to give me an answer. Okay. Um, right. Uh, at the, at the moment, probably just, not. Just pardon. At the moment, probably not. Why do you say probably? Okay. Um, Right. Now, can, can I, so you're can in the I shirt answer, shop, what, having what, set what, fire you, you to said, every shirt. Question, having set you fire to every your shirt you've ever bought. James, you're standing James, in James. the you're standing in the shirt shop bareback. I believe is the phrase. No, no, no. James, and this James, this James, is a James, good negotiating said, tactic. Carry on. Okay. No, no. You said I answer your question, then I can say what I wanted to say. And I'll now you can. So we've got we've got no yeah, trade I've deals. I answered your question, and I said probably none. Yes. So what I'd like to now say yes. is is what I wanted to say. Good. Good. Okay. Now what. The problem that the problem that you've just done is that you've taken an analogy 
right? And you've and you've created and you've twist not twisted it, but but you've extended it to the point of absurdity. But it was your okay? analogy. No, it's, it, yeah, yes, it's my analogy. So we're in your shop. As, 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 analogies and metaphors, as you very well know, are only up to a certain point. Yes. Once, once you extend them past, once you extend them past that point, then of course it, it becomes absurd. Well, good. I'm glad we both okay, agree and, that and your well, analogy is absurd. So back to the negotiating no, 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 position. No, 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 no. Your extension of my of my analogy is absurd. Oh, okay. My analogy, as far as far as so, I shouldn't have asked you any questions order. about You're, it, and then it would have sounded clever. No, 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 because you, you, I've, I've given you an analogy, and I'm trying to explain to you what I mean. Yes. You've then, you've then taken it and stretched it into absurdity. I apologise for making your analogy sound absurd. No, your extension was absurd. My analogy wasn't. Okay, so we're back no, no, to the if shop. I could just, if I could just say, if I could just say what I wanted to say now, please. By, by. Okay, so in any negotiating stance, <laughs> if you're not prepared to walk away, you give power to the other party. Okay. No. Now, by, not okay. By, by, by not agreeing, by not, not agreeing okay. to for the reason that's just become clear, and which, by your own admission, is absurd. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Understand. I'm sorry. Could you? Yes, of course I can. It, it's only a powerful negotiating position if you walk back to everything you had before you started negotiating. Mm -hmm. It's not a powerful yes. negotiating position if, by abandoning negotiations, you end up with considerably less than you had before, which is why, actually, my extension of your analogy was not absurd. It's the analogy that's absurd. No, be, okay, okay, because, be, because, um, okay, now... Take your time. We, we, can, we can walk back to the World Trade... We can walk, walk back to the WTO and the GATT agreement, okay? No, all, we can't. That, no, no, we can't possible. do that, except with the European well, Union's permission... Well, do you really need me to tell you this after three years? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, because, well then I will. Okay, no, so because that's fair. Absolutely. I do this for a living, you don't. The reason that uh, we can't course. do that no, is because Article 24 of GATT is a interim position that's put in place between two parties that have already yeah, agreed a trade agreement. I didn't mention agreement. Article 24. I didn't mention Article 24. Oh, so I which article of GATT are you GATT talking about? Uh, um, uh, 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 the, uh, the basic stuff. Well, uh, go on. You know, what, where, what's the basic where, where stuff? Where, where any country can trade with any other country using the WTO basic rules, as where, and which, which means we put tariffs on 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 things, which which I totally understand. Now they, that gives us two things. It gives us one, okay. It gives us, and I've got to admit, I'm a slight protectionist, right? It gives us the ability to to although prices will rise initially it it does give us the ability to actually bring industry back into the country no it doesn't um, yeah it does because i mean for example nestle so um, why does, why does no uh, country on the planet and, currently and trade on these terms cadbury's, cadbury's are no longer are no longer oh, uh, manufacturing I, 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 in the uk why does no country on the planet currently trade on the terms you describe as desirable a, no no because it's a starting point okay because from that starting point we can then Yes, and this is the point uh, about we, your we analogy, build, is that we, build, we, build we already have... We can, build, we can um, build a relationship with the European Union right. based upon that as a starting point. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the end But point. based upon what? what? I, don't, I don't starting understand. Starting You're talking about what the former Director General of the World Trade Organization has described as moving from the first division to the third division. You're describing it as a good idea. No, I'm not describing it as a good idea. I'm describing it as a starting point. Right, okay, but a starting once, once point the, that is only once, necessitated by surrendering all the stuff that we've spent 30 years assembling and, and, and negotiating and building. Yeah, yes, yes. So but, why is okay, that a good, well, why is that okay. preferable to what we currently have? Right, now, also, Take okay, time. The, IMF, the IMF has also said that, that the um, European Union over the last 10 years has, has, has had very low growth and they've had a period, period of high unemployment and that's, that's due to last for another 10 years. Okay, I, I, listen, I've, I'm four minutes late for the news, Darren, and, and I'd like to thank you, actually, for demonstrating a lot more articulately than I could that absolutely nothing has changed, and the same slogans and the same hollow soundbites and the same misunderstandings are at the very heart of what Boris Johnson has now successfully sold to the country. I had no idea how late it was. I hope you take that as a compliment. Mark's call from Sudbury. Hi, Mark. Hi. Yeah, my position is clear. It's about uh, Boris. They sh he should be given all the opportunity to to do what he's supposed to do because uh, uh, people have been uh, prophesying uh, dooms and glooms and all keep that aside well in the in the interim yeah there will be a bit of a uh, hiccup but on the long run people are not looking at it on the long run on the long run britain will be far far better off to be its own and i ask this question where was britain before this so-called eu
Britain was on its own striving. And if Britain come out of this... Well, hang on, Mark, Mark, let's just let's just look at that, because actually in the 30 years between the end of the war and the and the mid 70s or the early early 70s, um, it, Britain absolutely was striving, whether they were, um, you know, suffering in the immediate years after the war or building up in the 60s again. But but don't forget how that was achieved or in part how that was achieved and what the backdrop to that was. The backdrop to that was almost total or you know the, the the final nail in the coffin of total loss of empire um uh, no bad thing in my view but it had its impact and then there was the the uh, the whole question of of the the new deal the support from america to make that possible america bailed britain out after the war that's what the special relationship is all about yeah that that that's true yeah but when, so it was it was striving but it was striving that was underwritten by the united states yeah, the time has really passed, uh, gone on, and I believe if with a no deal situation, Britain will still be able to survive. This is my point, and Boris should be given the opportunity to do what he's supposed to do, and uh, try and get rid of all those Judases around him. Thank you, Mark, for your call, Mark, in Sudbury. Uh, live on LBC, Marcus Jones, Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party and MP for uh, Nuneaton. Thanks very much for joining us. I can see you on our camera at uh, College Green. And we've been speaking in our first hour about the, the high temperatures. We've heard from people working in uh, sweltering conditions and all sorts of jobs. Uh, let me just check. We're not putting you through it. Are we breaching any laws by putting, sitting you in that heat for hour after hour? Good afternoon, Eddie. It's uh, pretty hot out here on College Green, but what I can report is that uh, LBC have been extremely generous in providing uh, a very nice fan which is sat just a few inches away from me. And is it cooling you down? Is it comfortable? It is comfortable, actually. It is comfortable. Excellent. All right, now where should we start with all of this? Well, let's start with the, the backstop. He, he's going to remove it. Yeah, I think Boris, uh, our new Prime Minister, has been very clear um, the backstop was the biggest impediment to the withdrawal agreement passing through the House of Commons uh, earlier this year. Uh, he's absolutely clear uh, that he doesn't uh, like the principles of the backstop uh, because it traps us uh, into a customs union uh, potentially and potentially traps us uh, into other mechanisms uh, that wouldn't uh, give us a situation where we have full sovereignty uh, and therefore the Prime Minister has set out very clearly his pitch to the EU, uh, and he certainly did that today to the House of Commons as well. And we've reported on Michel Barnier's initial response. They're not budging. What are we going to do next? Well, I think that's the first response from the EU, and that is always going to be the case. In fairness to the EU, that's been their response all along. I, I, I fully appreciate that. But they've also got to consider the democratic decision of the UK in 2016, well, been, when there was a that. clear mandate doing, but hold to up, Forgive me for interrupting, but, but we, we know all of this, and this is all water under the bridge. How is Boris Johnson going to magically get rid of the backstop? Well, what I can say to you is, today, Eddie, um, it was a barnstormy performance in the House of Commons. Yeah, but it's not, uh, not theatre we're looking clear. for, it's action. People the want to know what's going to happen well, with the their futures and made their jobs it very clear and their what lives. his action was going to be, and that is take us out of the EU by the 31st of October, well, you're just and, the, and he's been very clear, he's been very clear... You keep saying how clear he's being, he hasn't been clear, we don't know how he's going to do it. He's been very clear, and if the EU are not willing to um, make sure... What will he do, uh, move it next door to them? ...that we have something on the table that we can get through the House of Commons, uh, the Prime Minister is quite clear that he's willing uh, to go for no deal. Clearly he wants a deal, and clearly he wants to take the country out of the EU... Uh, in a measured way with the deal uh, but he's absolutely serious as well mm. that the EU need to come to the table and that's the right thing to well, do. Well they're, they're at the table and we've, we've been at the table with them for three years so so Boris Johnson's going to make this work by saying remove the backstop or I'll shoot Britain in the foot. Well no he's not saying that at all what he's saying is that he was elected earlier this week three years ago the country spoke and he fully fully aware that politicians need to deliver. And he made it very clear today to the House of Commons that's what he was going to do. Mm. And I think what was telling was that 
the benches opposite looked extremely glum and there's many, many Labour MPs on those back benches that represent seats in the Midlands and the North that know he's serious and they know that they're going to have to react positively uh, to what's put on the table going forward because the they know that the, the public are fed mm. up of the situation. Well, the, the public may be fed up for all sorts of reasons, including uh, not getting straight answers to questions like uh, what happens if the UK is still in the EU on November the 1st? Well, as I say, that's not the intention. No, and, I, know, I know it's not the, the prime, intention, the but no minister... one has been, forgive me, but no one, I had several politicians, including Jacob Rees-Mogg, sitting in that chair the other day. No one is prepared to tell us uh, what happens if we're still in the EU on November the 1st. Will you please tell me what plan B is? Well, the plan is, uh, and uh, Michael Gove uh, and uh, Sajid Javid, our new Chancellor, have been put in charge of ramping up the arrangements for no deal and the plan is to come out of the EU on the 31st of October. That's understood. It's plain if it doesn't simple. happen, what is plan B? There is no plan B in There's that no sense. plan B. Well, there we what, are. I'm, what I'm saying to you, Eddie, that is not an Off option. The cliff. We are going to leave the EU by the 31st. But we've heard all that from Conservative Prime Ministers. Yep, yeah, we, we've had that from Conservative Prime Ministers. Theresa May repeated like a parrot about March. It never happened. I, it, think, I, think the, I think what you've got to consider, Eddie, is that we have a Prime Minister... He's more trustworthy is, than Theresa May. He's absolutely adamant that he wants to leave the EU... His adamance is neither here October. nor there. Why doesn't he have a plan B? And he has the will, and as you could see, he had the vast majority of the Conservative Party right behind him and enthused to deliver on what the public voted and for. We've got enthusiasm, we've got determination, we've got the British bulldog spirit. What we don't have is any idea what happens if this plan doesn't work. Tell me what will happen if it doesn't work. Well, what I'm saying to you, Eddie, is there is firmly a plan in place. We are ramping up. And now the, you're just repeating yourself. We are, no, we're ramping up uh, for no deal on the basis that that is the best way to get a good deal. I understand deal. all of that. What if it doesn't work? Well, I think it will work. I'm quite confident I appreciate your work. confidence. What if it doesn't? I'm sure it'll work. And the Prime Minister, as I say, has come into number 10, fresh ideas and a real enthusiasm to get enthusiasm. things done. And it's, not, that thing and it's not just about and it's not just about coming out of the EU. It's also about kind the domestic of policy agenda. 20,000 new police officers. No, don't change the subject. Make, we make haven't had an sure. answer to the central question uh, facing this nation. The central promise from Boris Johnson has been, I'll get you out by October the 31st. Now, he's been very sketchy on important details to get us there. And so my question to you and to others has always been, what happens if we don't make it? And the answer is, we're determined to make it. I'm suggesting to you, that's not good enough. Well, we've been clear. We've been absolutely You have not crystal. been clear. Been and you saying you've been clear Eddie. doesn't help. We have, are you, have you had you media training, Marcus Jones? And, have you had media training? And if... And have you had media training? And if... Have you had what, media training? What I'm, what I'm saying to you, Eddie, Have is, you? What I'm saying to Did you, you is, have, Eddie, have you been coached on how to not answer questions? What I'm saying to you is, Eddie, if we are in a situation by the 31st of October, yes. we will be leaving the EU without a deal. Yes. Now, the plan What if it is, doesn't happen? The plan is to get a deal. I know all that. And that's plain. Have and you had media training? Well, what I'm saying to you, have Eddie... Have you kept the receipt? Eddie, Eddie, I haven't paid for any media training. There is no receipt. And what I would say to you is that we need to get our heads around getting out of the EU by sure, the 31st sure. of October. I get all of that. And, and politicians, and this is politicians on all sides of the House of Commons, need to understand, and you just look at those European election results, and we discussed them on your show mm. not so long ago, you look at those European election results, and it was bad news for both of the mainstream political parties. Well, if I may, and that was if absolutely I may, because if I may, if we, had not, we had not followed through mm. on the referendum result. If I and may, full stop, who, who, our new Prime Minister may, who, is determined who, to do it. Who cares about the future of, of political parties. I'm talking about the future of the country, and that's what people are interested in. Who uh, cares if Labour survives? Who cares if the Conservatives survive? What people want to know is what's going to happen to their lives and their jobs and their families and their futures, and you're telling me there's no plan B, and that's, I would suggest to you, a problem. Well, of course, we're worried about people's futures, and we want to make sure that as we come out of the EU, that is done in a way that protects people's futures. And if we have to have no deal, we need to make sure that the uh, necessary 
um, commitments and the necessary things are done to make sure that's done in the best way possible. But we also need to uh, recognise that people are interested in other things as well. People are interested in making sure mm. we've got more police officers on the street. They're interested in making sure that when they go to the GP, they can get an appointment. And they're also interested in, in, in getting their operation earlier. And they're having children at school that are getting more money put into those schools and a better education. They're all things that the Prime Minister wants to do as well. Um, is Boris Johnson going to correct the record after his kipper-waving speech? Well, clearly, he set out what he wants to achieve. Uh, and today, uh, a number of questions uh, about various commitments that have been made were put to him. Well, let, 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 he, me, let me put it to you, because he didn't answer the question. Was he right to say what he said about kipper packaging rules being made by the EU? Well, I don't know all the ins and outs of the particular issue that you're raising, Eddie. Well, he uh, said something that wasn't true, and now he's Prime Minister. Is he going to keep saying things that aren't true? Well, I think he's setting out a very positive vision for this country. Is it clear? And, and what I can tell you, it is clear, and Thought what so. I can tell you is that it will enthuse people, and I can see from the Chamber today how enthused the Conservative Party were, and the Labour Party was so glum, and that's because they know that particularly uh, in places that the Labour Party represent, that message will be cutting through. Thanks so much. Good to see you, and uh, feel free to take that fan with you. Marcus Jones, Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party and MP for Nuneaton.